Before we begin, let's look at examples of some common chemical reactions, like the burning of coal. When coal is burnt, the chemical energy stored in the molecules is released as heat or thermal energy. Another example is that of burning of fuel in a car engine. When the fuel burns in an engine, it converts the chemical energy to mechanical energy, propelling the car to move along the road. In both the examples, chemical energy, that is the energy stored in the bonds of atoms and molecules, is converted to other forms of energy. Thus, various forms of energy are interrelated and under certain conditions, these may be transformed from one form to another. The branch of science that deals with the study of different forms of energy and the quantitative relationship between them is known as thermodynamics. The term thermodynamics is derived from the Greek word thermos meaning heat and dynamics meaning flow. It was coined by James Joule in the early 19th century. Thermodynamics deals with the energy changes within a system. A system in thermodynamics refers to that part of the universe in which observations are made. For example, the tea in the teapot is a system. The part of the universe that is not a part of the system but can interact with the system is called a surrounding. In this case, the room in which the teapot is kept is the surrounding. Systems and surroundings together constitute the universe. The part that separates a system from its surrounding is known as boundary. In this case, the wall of the teapot is the boundary. Note that a boundary can be real or imaginary and it controls the flow of energy and matter into the system or out of the system. In thermodynamics, based on the movements of matter and energy between a system and its surroundings, systems can be classified into three types. These are open system, closed system and isolated system. Let's look at each system. A system is said to be open if it can exchange both energy and matter with its surroundings. For example, tea becomes cold when left open for some time in a container as a result of exchange of energy with the surroundings. At the same time, some amount of tea escapes from the cup as vapor. This is because of exchange of matter with the surroundings. Hence, this is an example of an open thermodynamic system. A system which permits the exchange of energy but not the exchange of matter across the boundary with its surroundings is called a closed system. For example, if tea is kept in a closed steel teapot, it takes some time to cool down. This indicates that energy is exchanged with the surroundings. However, as vapor cannot escape from the container, no exchange of matter is possible. Hence, this stands as an example for a closed thermodynamic system. A system that can exchange neither energy nor matter with its surroundings is called an isolated system. For example, the tea kept in a thermos flask remains hot and the vapor also doesn't escape out. This is because neither matter nor energy can be exchanged with the surroundings. Hence, this is an example of an isolated thermodynamic system. You have learned that a system is a part of the universe in which observations are made. In order to make these observations, it is important that we know the state of the system. By state of a system, we mean the condition of the system in terms of measurable, macroscopic properties 
such as temperature T, pressure P, and volume V, to name a few. The first state of the system, that is, the state before the change, is called the initial state. And the last state, that is the state after the change, is called the final state. As a change in the magnitude of these properties changes the state of a system, these properties are called state variables or state functions. In other words, properties whose values depend only upon the initial and final states of the system and are independent of the manner in which the change is brought about are called state functions. Macroscopic properties on which the state of a system depends are further divided into extensive properties and intensive properties. Extensive properties are properties that depend upon the quantity of the matter contained in a system. Examples of extensive properties are mass, volume, and heat capacity. For example, 200 milliliters of water takes up more volume than 100 milliliters of water. Intensive properties are properties that are independent of the amount of the substance present in the system. Some examples of intensive properties are temperature, pressure, freezing point, and boiling point. For example, boiling point is an intensive property because whatever be the quantity of water, it always boils at 100 degrees Celsius. When the state of a system changes, it implies that some thermodynamic process has occurred on the system and energy has been either added to it or removed from it. The energy stored within a substance or a system is known as the internal energy of the system. In other words, internal energy is the sum of all the possible kinds of energy of a system. Internal energy is represented by capital U. The absolute value of internal energy cannot be found. However, change in it, represented by delta U, can be found. Internal energy U changes when work is done on or by the system. Heat passes into or out of the system. Matter enters or leaves the system. Let us discuss the change in internal energy brought out by work done on the system. Let us take a certain amount of water in a thermos flask or an insulated vessel that does not allow heat exchange with the surroundings. Such a system is called an adiabatic. The state of such a system changes without an exchange of heat. And thus, the process is called an adiabatic process. In other words, delta Q is equal to zero. We can bring a change in internal energy in a system by two ways. In the first method, internal energy can be increased by doing some mechanical work. For example, by churning the water. Let UA be the initial internal energy of the system at temperature TA. After churning, internal energy changes to UB as temperature increases to TB. Thus, the change in internal energy is given by delta U is equal to UB minus UA. In the second method, internal energy can be increased by the same amount by doing electrical work. In this, an immersion rod is kept in water 
and the temperature before and after is measured. We find the change in temperature as Tb minus Ta. Hence, the change in internal energy, delta U, equal to Ub minus Ua. Thus, internal energy changes to the same extent either by doing mechanical work or electrical work, which indicates that it is independent of the manner in which the change is brought about. Therefore, internal energy is a state function. If work is done on the system, then U increases and W is considered as positive. On the other hand, if work is done by the system, then U decreases and W is considered as negative. A change in internal energy can also be brought out by the transfer of heat. Heat transfer takes place from the system to the surroundings or vice versa. The exchange of energy due to temperature difference is called heat Q. Therefore, delta U is equal to Q. Q is positive if heat transfers from the surroundings to the system and negative if heat transfers from the system to the surroundings. If heat transfers from the surroundings to the system, then Internal energy increases and hence Q is considered as positive. On the other hand, if heat transfer takes from the system to the surroundings, then internal energy decreases, that is, Q is negative. When a change in the state of a system occurs, Energy is transferred either to or from the surroundings. This energy may be transferred as heat or mechanical work. In thermodynamics, the only type of work generally considered is the work done in expansion or compression of a gas. This is known as pressure volume work or PV work. Let us understand this better with an example. Consider a cylinder filled with one mole of an ideal gas and fitted with a frictionless piston. Let's say the area of the cross section of the cylinder is A square centimeter. The pressure of the gas inside the cylinder is P and the volume of the gas inside the cylinder is Vi. Here, Vi stands for the initial volume of the gas. Now, let's apply external pressure Pex on the piston. If the external pressure Pex is greater than the internal pressure P, then the piston moves inwards until the pressure P inside the cylinder becomes equal to the external pressure PEX. Let this change be achieved in a single step. At this stage, the final volume of the system is represented by VF and the distance that the piston is moved is represented by L. Thus, the change in the volume, that is, final volume, Vf minus initial volume, Vi, is distance L multiplied by area A. We know that pressure equals force divided by area. Hence, the applied force F on the piston equals pressure multiplied by area. That is, the applied force F equals external pressure PEX multiplied by the area of cross section A. If W is the work done on the system by the movement of the piston, 
Then, work equals force multiplied by distance. But force equals external pressure. That is, PEX multiplied by area of cross section A. Substituting the value of force in the equation for work, we get work is equal to external pressure PEX multiplied by area A multiplied by distance L. But distance L multiplied by area A gives change in volume delta V. On substituting, we get work equals external pressure PEX multiplied by minus change in volume delta V. That is, work is equal to minus external pressure PEX multiplied by final volume VF minus initial volume VI. The negative sign is added in the expression to obtain the conventional sign for W. According to the latest SI conventions, W is taken as positive if work is done on the system, that is, the work of compression. And W is taken as negative if the work is done by the system, that is, the work of expansion. Therefore, the general expression for work done is written as W equals minus external pressure PEX multiplied by change in volume delta V which is equal to minus external pressure PEX multiplied by final volume VF minus initial volume VI. The expression of work applies for both expansion and compression of a gas. If the gas expands, Vf will be greater than Vi. Then, we can say that work is done by the system. Hence, the value of work done will be negative. Similarly, if the gas compresses, Vf will be lesser than Vi. On substituting the values of volume in the equation of work, we get a negative volume. When this negative value is multiplied with the negative external pressure, the resultant work is positive. Then we can say that work is done on the system. If the pressure is not constant, and changes in finite numbers of steps for every stage of compression, then the work done is calculated as W equals minus the summation of pressure multiplied by change in volume. When these values are plotted on a graph, the work done on the gas is visible in the shaded area. However, if the pressure is not constant and varies, such that it is always infinitesimally greater than the pressure of the gas at each stage of compression, the volume decreases by an infinitesimal amount, dV. Then, work is equal to minus F integral of external pressure, PEX, multiplied by infinitesimal change in volume, dV. If gas expands, then the external pressure is always less than the pressure of the system. Thus, PEX at each stage is equal to the difference between the internal pressure P and infinitesimal change in pressure of the system DP. If gas is compressed, then the external pressure is always greater than the pressure of the system. Thus, the PEX at each stage is equal to the sum of the internal pressure P and infinitesimal change in pressure dP. Therefore, 
external pressure applied on a system is expressed as external pressure equals internal pressure plus or minus infinitesimal change in the pressure of the system. This is known as reversible process. Thus, a reversible process is one that takes place infinitesimally slowly and the direction of which at any point can be reversed by an infinitesimal change in the state of the system. In a reversible process, the system is in equilibrium in the initial, final, and all intermediate stages. To understand this, let's assume that there is a cylinder with a frictionless piston. Now, let's place few grains of sand above the piston and allow the gas to compress by adding one grain of sand at a time. Here, the process is so slow that it can be easily reversed by removing one grain of sand at any time. This is known as reversible process. Processes which are not reversible are known as irreversible processes. Under reversible conditions, the relationship between work and internal pressure is written as reversible work equals minus integral of external pressure PEX with respect to infinitesimal change in volume dV. We know that external pressure PEX equals internal pressure P in plus or minus infinitesimal change in pressure of the system, dp. Thus, on substituting the values, we get the equation reversible work equals minus integral of internal pressure p in plus or minus infinitesimal change in pressure of the system, dp, multiplied by infinitesimal change in volume, dv. As change in the pressure and volume are infinitesimally small, their product is still smaller. Therefore, the product of infinitesimal change in pressure, dp, and infinitesimal change in volume, dv, can be neglected. Hence, the final equation is reversible work equals negative integral of P in multiplied by infinitesimal change in volume dV. Now, if we represent pressure of the gas P in terms of the ideal gas equation, then we get PV equals nRT or P equals nRT divided by V. On substituting the value of P at constant temperature in the reversible work equation, we get reversible work equals minus integral of nRT multiplied by infinitesimal change in volume dV by V. Integrating and applying limits as VI for initial volume and Vf for final volume, we get reversible work W rev is equal to minus nRT lan final volume Vf divided by initial volume Vi. On converting natural logarithm to base 10, we get reversible work W rev equals minus 2.303 nRT log Vf by Vi. If the gas expands in vacuum, external pressure Pex being zero in the expression W is equal to minus Pex multiplied by delta V, W becomes zero.
This is known as free expansion. No work is done during the free expansion of an ideal gas, whether the process is reversible or irreversible. We know that according to the first law of thermodynamics, the change in internal energy is represented as delta U equals Q plus W. On substituting the value of W in the above equation, we get delta U equals Q plus minus PEX multiplied by delta V. If the process is carried out at constant volume, delta V is zero. Therefore, work done is also zero. Hence, at constant volume, delta U equals QV, where QV is heat supplied at constant volume.